Hello, my name is Ailey Dalgan. I'm an associate editor with The Scientist magazine. And today, I'm going to talk to you about RNA activation. Now, RNA activation is often considered the flip side of RNA interference. But whereas RNA interference silences genes at the translational level on the messenger RNA itself, RNA activation is thought to operate at the level of transcription by actually affecting how much messenger RNA transcript is produced. In my feature story, now showing RNA activation, I talk about three different researchers who all have different ideas for how this is happening. Now, they can all agree that something is changing in the vicinity of the promoter region. They just have some slightly, uh, different, slightly different models for how that's coming about. So I'm going to try to explain those three models to you now. So if we imagine that we've got our double helix genomic DNA there, and there's going to be at the beginning of the gene, there will be the promoter region. Now, in the first model that I present, um, proposed by David Corey and Bethany Janowski from the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, they think that there's a non-coding RNA transcript in the vicinity of the promoter, and that by targeting that transcript with an introduced RNA, it then recruits argonaut proteins and somehow modifies the promoter region, changing the epigenetic modifiers in the vicinity uh, DNA methylation modifiers, histone uh, deacetylases, those kind of proteins. And what we see is an increase in the transcription of mRNA. In the second model that I present, proposed by Kevin Morris from the Scripps Research Institute, he thinks again that we've got an, an antisense, non-coding RNA. Um, but when he targets the, the um, non-coding RNA, he actually targets a downstream site, not in the immediate vicinity of the promoter. And again, we see a recruitment of the argonaut protein. And now he actually gets a cutting up of the transcript, a, a slicing and dicing, if you will. And so this idea is that it's actually not all that different from sort of traditional RNA interference, except that the target here is the antisense transcript instead of the coding mRNA transcript. And what results is, again, an increase in transcription. In the third model, proposed by Robert Place and Long Cheng Li from the University of California, San Francisco, they also are targeting non-coding RNA transcripts, except they th are proposed that they're targeting little tiny ones in the vicinity of the promoter and actually in the same orientation as the mRNA, or they call these sense transcripts. And so they target these again with some introduced RNA and it recruits the argonaut protein, again somehow changing factors around the promoter region, and they see again an increase in mRNA transcription. So we've got three different models to all explain the same phenomenon. And uh, although there are some subtle differences here, the important point is that they're all somehow changing the promoter, and they're all doing that by interactions with these non-coding RNA transcripts that somehow are regulating gene transcription. Which of these models is correct? It's a hot topic and it'd be an exciting field to watch.